Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining me um, for Winning with Stakeholders, using data to tie your community work to business impact. I'm joined today in this fireside chat with leaders from both the Asana and Common Room teams to discuss data-driven approaches to measuring and communicating the impact of community. Today, we'll hear tips on where to get started, how to find the most meaningful metrics, and what it takes to build a data-driven community program that shines in the eyes of your stakeholders and your participants with real-world examples from the award-winning community team at Asana. So with that, let's introduce the our team here. Um, let's start with you, Josh Zirkle. Hey, everyone. Hello, CMXers. I'm Josh. I lead community at Asana. I've been at Asana about five years. I started the community program here from scratch, so it's amazing to see how far it's come. How I got into community, I really love bringing people together, and I started doing that at professional associations, eventually leading to me running the community program at Evernote, and now here at Asana. Awesome. Thanks for joining us. Savannah? Hi, everyone. I'm Savannah. I am a marketing analyst here at Asana, and how I got into community is going back to my senior year of college. I had an internship at AAA and I had to create a Tableau dashboard as part of that internship, but I had never learned Tableau. So basically I taught myself through watching a bunch of YouTube videos and utilizing Tableau's online forum. Um, and ultimately I was able to land a job ever after my graduation. And so through that experience, trying to break into the analytics space, I really came to appreciate online communities for empowering me to pick up new tools and expanding my skill sets. And so this role at Asana really piqued my interest because I saw it as an opportunity to contribute to something that had helped me so much and also just to see how a community program operates from the inside. That's great. And a great transition to Josh Prysell, our resident Tableau expert at Common Room. Thanks, Jake. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm Josh. I do data and analytics stuff at Common Room. Uh, and very similar to Savannah, I got my start in community using Tableau as well. I started my career about 10 years ago teaching uh, Tableau classes and got really entrenched in the Tableau community and all the super awesome people there and have been in love with it ever since. And then finally, I'm, I'm Jake. I'm the COO here at Common Room. I'll be moderating this conversation. And I got my start in community uh, the last 10 years be before Common Room. I was at a company, Okta where I ran one of our product lines that was focused on developers. And so DevRel and the community we built around that was critical to our business success. And so very passionate about all the things that we'll be talking about today and how to tie it all together. So to start us off, um, I'll start with you, Josh Z. Tell us more about the great community at, at Asana and kind of how you've thought about metrics to start. Sure, thanks, Jake. Our community program at Asana is called Asana together because we want our people to Asana together. And our community program is pretty far reaching. I really believe in creating programs that meet customers where they are. And to me, that means more than just one thing that they can do in the program. So we have three pillars in our program to offer a buffet of choices for our members. We have a membership program called the Ambassador Program, where people who are the Asana enthusiasts on their team or the person who's leading the charge can sign up and get extra resources and assets to help them with their own deployment and give them ideas for how to bring Asana to their team. Then we have a forum community, and that's where people can come to ask and answer questions, learn best practices, and also engage in really fun things like contests. And then we have an event series where we do about 200 live events a year. And this is where people can come to learn more about different ways to use Asana, get hands-on assistance with Asana, and really learn about all the new features that are coming in Asana so that they can help their teams be more effective. So with a really far-reaching program like this, metrics can be challenging because there's a lot of surface area to cover. For me, I think it's really helpful to think about metrics in two dimensions. The first is what I call program health, and this is really looking at, of the things that you're doing in your program, is the program itself working? For instance, are people coming to your events and how many people are actually showing up? How many people are joining your ambassador program on a monthly basis? This is really looking at, are the things we're doing actually working? Is the program itself, the mechanics of it, are people taking you up on it? But that's not what the business actually cares about. They care about things like revenue or product usage. And this is where business impact metrics come in. And these are a lot of the things we're able to track with the help of Common Room because this is where I'm able to better tell other stakeholders in the business, here's how our program impacts what you care about. So I think it's actually really important to track both of these types of metrics, both the program health and the business impact, because then you tell the complete story 
with metrics of how your program is doing and the impact that it's having. That's awesome. So obviously having someone like Savannah is a, uh, is a huge help when it comes to those metrics. And I'm guessing that many of our audience members have not had the good fortune of having a marketing analyst to support them. So Savannah, could you tell us a bit more around how you support the community team and what you focus on at Asana? Yeah. So before coming to Asana, I had personally never seen analytics done in this space before, which in hindsight is such a shame because there is so much opportunity to grow a community using data. But during my time at Asana, I've found that there's really no blueprint for measuring community because each community, their program varies so greatly from organization to organization, and they each offer such different benefits. And so in the absence of those industry-wide one-size-fits-all metrics, there's an opportunity to customize measurement to fit the unique goals of your program. And at Asana, we know from talking to our customers that what they really care about is helping their teams adopt Asana and get excited about using Asana to ultimately take control of their work. So with that in mind, as an analyst, my goal is to support our members by one, reporting on product adoption within their organizations, and two, identifying which areas of the program we should be focusing on improving to further support them. These are kind of the program health metrics that Josh had mentioned earlier. And then finally, really what we're here to talk about today is translating community success into quantifiable metrics that other teams at Asana care about. And this step is really crucial to maintaining and growing our program. And it works by first identifying how our program ladders up to shared company goals. And once we're able to show that we're all working towards the same goals, our cross-functional partners are excited to collaborate with us on our initiatives. And we're all able to show up together as a unit when asking for resources to continue to grow and develop our community. Sounds That sounds great. And I, and I love hearing you talk through all those, uh, those key points. So before we actually dig into these, I'm sure everyone wants to understand what you've actually found. Um, I thought it would be helpful to start Josh Z was just talking through a bit more of the of the journey. You mentioned that you started the Asana community there, and my guess is you didn't start with what Savannah just said. So maybe walk us through, um, yeah, that that journey. If only we'd started with Savannah at our side <laughs> at the beginning. I can only imagine where we'd be now. We're in a good place, but having analytics at the beginning would have made such a huge difference, but we didn't have them. The reality is I'm guessing most people watching this probably won't either, but you have to start with something and it could be something as simple as what are the main goals that you're trying to achieve? For me, when I started at Asana, there was no community program and there weren't really clear goals for it either. And so the first thing I did was gather all the key stakeholders, I think around 20 senior leaders at the company at the time. And just ask them, like, what do you want from this program? What are you expecting it to deliver? And each of them had a different answer, which was really interesting. From there, I was able to ferret out, like, what are the key things that we're really trying to drive towards? And then what are some of the markers? Even if we don't have deep level analytics, what are some of the indicators that will let us know we're at least progressing on this path? We weren't at the, at the beginning able to have business impact metrics. It took us quite a while to get there. But at least we were able to start looking directionally at program health. And is that pointing in the direction of success of this program towards the goals that were clearly stated and agreed upon by all of these stakeholders? That part was really critical because if I had just designed the program on my own without their input and didn't really get to know what they cared about, then I would just be creating the program for the program's sake. And I think that's a mistake. It's much better if you actually find out, why am I here to create this program? What are the people who hired me at least? thinking that it should achieve, that's where you can start with your metrics journey is figure out what are some of those indicators that will let you know that you're at least progressing along that path. And as you progress, hopefully you can get more resources, maybe even an analyst to devote some of their time to help you go into the deeper level metrics that will help show the real impact that your program is having. So while I wish I could say we started out at the beginning with having all of this data at our disposal, we didn't. It was incremental progress along the way. And I think that's what anyone who's watching can do as well. Yeah, that's perfect. So I want to bring Josh B into the conversation. Josh, you're fortunate to work with a lot of leading communities like uh, Sana in your role at, at Common Room. Where do you usually start when, you, when you're talking to leaders like Josh and Savannah? And you know, how do you kind of start to work with them to find these fruitful places to look for these meaningful insights? 
Yeah, thanks, Jake. Um, I typically start by asking a few questions to make sure that the analysis is relevant to the community at hand, including what matters most to your community, um, what decisions are you looking to inform? Something that we always want to prove out is the value of the community, which historically has been quite difficult. And so uh, when we have the data available, we're able to, to jump into that. So a couple examples on how we've approached that in the past. Um, one is with Slack engagement, where if you're investing in your Slack community, you want to know if it's paying off. And so uh, with Common Room, we have the data available to actually provide benchmarking for those communities. So we were able to do that with one customer to show how their investment in Slack was paying off. And another example is uh, when you bring together community revenue and product data, you can do things like look at community-led opportunity and community-qualified opportunity, where community-led opportunity is when you have a community touch point before something enters your CRM, so your Salesforce or HubSpot or whatever else it might be. And your community-qualified uh, opportunities are when something is in your community before it's closed in your CRM. So you're looking at how much your community really impacts that pipeline. Uh, but all in all, you know, it's it's about proving out the value of your community. Yeah, that's great. And I think what you're highlighting there also um, a little bit to, to Josh C's point is it depends on where you are in your journey and, and where you focused on, right? So are you looking for program health or are you looking for, um, you know, business metrics essentially, right? Exactly. Yep. Awesome. Thanks. So obviously, uh, Josh B, you and Savannah have you know, work together here um, on some of the analysis for the Asana community. Let's talk about that work um, and jump into some of these actual metrics and the insights that you found. Yeah, so one of my favorite things about Asana is that we actually track all of our goals within the product itself. And so it's very easy to see how our individual goals rolled up to our team goals and how those rolled up to our company's goals. So with that lineage, it's really clear to see how our community program's goals roll up to um, some of the, the business metrics that we care about. And um, so because of that, it's really easy to infer how our program impacts the business. But what we wanted to do was tie hard numbers to this impact using data. And so we started out by first developing a few hypotheses to test and then prioritize those hypotheses based off of what perceived impact we, we thought they would have and also the data that we had available. And ultimately, we landed on an analysis that combined community data with revenue data and product data together, which I will hand over to Josh B to talk about. Thanks, Savannah. Um, yeah, so so as Savannah was saying, when we bring together community data, community data, revenue data, and product data, we're able to to find some really cool stuff. Um, and one of those insights that we're able to uncover is. Uh, event-driven feature adoption. So when you have specific events, uh, you're able to train people on specific features. And um, we're able to find some quite compelling insights around that, as well as uh, when you invest in your community, community can be a key revenue driver. Uh, so you're able to really pull in additional deals through your community by uh, providing them the resources that they need. That's great. And were there any um, any specific like metrics that you want to share in terms of the actual kind of delta between community and I'll, I'll call it non-community in engaged organizations? Yeah, so we weren't able to share actual numbers, but what I can share is that uh, we did find that there is a substantial amount of revenue that appears in community before ever making it to our CRM or ever talking to sales. So really what that's showing is that community can assist our sales teams with their goals. And that was great to see. Um, we also found that community members and their organizations have higher revenue and have higher product engagement than organizations without community members. And finally, going back to the feature adoption from events that Josh had touched on, we did find that users who attended our community events tended to more regularly use kind of our more complex or complicated features than users who didn't. All this to say that community at Asana is functioning in the way that we had hoped to see. That's what we all hope to see with our communities, right? Um, driving more revenue and driving more feature adoption. So kudos to the Asana team for obviously creating a, a very powerful community. So Josh Z, um, you know, obviously those are some great metrics that Savannah and and Josh B were able to to uncover. How did you take these and kind of communicate them to your stakeholders and circling back to the what you mentioned at, at the beginning that you met with 20 folks when you started the Asana community? Um, 
yeah, let's kind of bring it a, a bit full circle, right? And now you have all this great data. Yeah. So having the data then lets me a, lets me be able to tell the story, right? Because the data just tells part of it. I need to wrap it up in a way that will really be digestible by each of the stakeholders. Because if you're on the revenue team, you care about one thing. If you're on the product team, you care about something really different. Even though we're all working towards a set of shared goals, the language that I need to speak to you in so that the story is relevant to you differs from person to person, stakeholder to stakeholder. So it's really my job as the leader of the team to take all of this data and then wrap it up into a report that speaks the language of other parts of the business. I think a, a big mistake that a lot of community leaders that I've seen make is telling the community story from the community team's perspective. That isn't really helpful in most cases because other parts of the business, let's be honest, barely understand what we do at best. And so if we speak to them in our own language, it won't resonate with them the impact that we are having. So really learn who each of your stakeholders are and what they care about so that when you do tell the story, when you do your monthly report, or you go have a meeting with them to update them on what's happening. That way you can share with them the parts of your program and the impact that it's having that actually matter to each of your key stakeholders. So each month I, I prepare a pretty sizable report that talks about all the things that are in our program. I'm also a, a big internal PR fan. And so I do a lot of internal posts about what's happening in our program, including our metrics, but also the voices of community members, because I don't ever want myself or the team to lose that piece of it. What we're doing is for the company, but it's also for the people. And so having that balance in all of the communications, I think is actually quite important. Yeah, it's great. This, uh, you know, it's the qualitative and the quantitative aspects. It's both. Things, both right? are really yeah. important. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. So Asana, you know, you also have a very mature uh, community just in general, let alone the approach to metrics that we've shared here today. Um, as we kind of wrap up here, love to just go around the horn and if you could share, you know, some last, I'll call it pearls of wisdom um, that you want to impart on, on the audience. So maybe starting with you, Josh B. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Jake. So one of my favorite things in, in looking into this data was with Asana was how well thought out the hypotheses were. So it makes my job incredibly enjoyable to look into the data and look for insights and to share those with the team when we're able to really be partnering and working together and looking for insights in the community. And so uh, one thing I would encourage everybody to do is think about your data, think about your community and think about the things that you want to drive and really invest in that and start to dig into those insights because you can take some, some pretty amazing actions based off of those. Yeah, that's great. Savannah? Yeah, and I think, you know, part of the reason why we had hypotheses that were so well thought out is because we talked to our community members. And so I would say, you know, lean on them to let you know how the program has impacted them. And you can design metrics and KPIs around that. Um, you know, as your program evolves, your metrics should too. And so when you have new initiatives, don't be afraid to explore new metrics and, um, yeah, define, like better define how your program is impacting the rest of the business. Yeah, I think you guys did a great job with that. Sorry to just interject, but, um, you know, and I, and I know that you have this great tool called Asana, I believe, that helps you tie it all together. Um, but the way that you kind of laddered everything up into what are these, you know, kind of high level KPIs everyone cares about is a, is a really great call out so that everyone's aligned um, and everyone's very clear as to how you're moving the needle. So then Josh Z. Yeah, the last thing I would say is Community leaders, don't be afraid of metrics. It's your job as a leader to tell the story of what's going on with your program beyond what I call the warm fuzzies. That's a piece of it, but the business really needs to understand what your program is doing and how it's impacting. So figure out what your story is and how to tell it in the way that will resonate with your stakeholders. That's great. Um, so that concludes our session. Hopefully everyone at, at CMX found it as insightful as I did, as I'm, as I'm sure you did. You know, One thing I'll just highlight here is community-led growth has become a, a sort of buzzword out there right now. If you you know read any of the marketing, uh, I guess if you're in a marketing community, as an example, they'll be talking about it. Um, you know, we can talk about the buzzwords or the acronyms, but what I loved about this conversation is hearing about how Asana has at the gate really led this um, kind of initiative and really thought about their community as a key driver to business and been able to tie it out and move past the quote warm and fuzzies, as Josh Z would call it, 
into what are those things that the business cares about. So hopefully, um, or I'm sure you all found some pearls of wisdom here uh, from this conversation. And uh, we thank you for listening and hope to talk to you soon. Thanks, everyone.